Hi everyone, welcome to Electronics with Professor Mogal. Happy Thanksgiving to you, your family. I wish the best of everything in your lives. This is going to be a very special video, especially for those who are beginners trying to learn very long or trying to familiarize themselves with the learning language platforms such as Vivado. What I'm gonna talk about is how to troubleshoot some of the critical warnings and errors that you may encounter while synthesizing or implementing your code onto your FPGA board. Now over last 18 months or so, I have published nearly 30 odd videos on FPGA projects and I don't do those FPGA projects. Uh, those are not scripted, okay? So I basically go real time, do the coding most of the time in most of my videos and then you'll notice at the end of the video when I'm trying to implement the code onto an FPGA board, just like you, I will run into some kind of errors. And then I go about fixing those small errors and critical warnings and then implementing the code successfully onto the FPGA board. Now, if you have a code which has 100 lines, there's a possibility you can basically get 100 critical warnings. And if I go about them in a video, it will be such a long video. What I've done over the years is, uh, last 18 months or so, is I have collected some of the data from these errors uh, that are resulted from the synthesis, from synthesizing the code in, in Verilog onto the FPGA board. How you go about fixing them, how those errors impact the functionality of your design, and how you can basically solve it. Okay, so what I'm sharing with you, a resource which I consider as a gold for someone who is a beginner or even, you know, if you are, uh, you know, into Verilog already and you have, you know, all, most of your basic is covered, you will find this resource very helpful because it's got more than 100 errors and critical warnings in there. So without wasting much time, let's go, let's get started. And I also want to credit this to some of the followers and subscribers and my students who have inputted this and I've collected this information because these errors were reported by them and then we went on to fix those issues. And because I have documented everything, this is a resource that a lot of you will find helpful. So let's get rolling. So what you see on your screen is basically you got four columns, okay? You got B, C, D, and E. A is just a number of errors. So I have a total of 102 errors as you can see. So these are decent amount of errors and there's a good chance you may encounter similar or same errors in your code. The first error is basically talks about the error in warnings and I have made my best possible effort to include the error code or warning, such, such as for example over here, the warning is Vivado 12-1017. So if you have the same error, all you need to do is just press Control F and then maybe just type the error code in there 1017 and then press Enter. And then the first thing that appears on your screen should be this row right here. The second column tells you what impact that error had upon the functionality of your design or the board. Well, it basically stopped us from creating a new file. And the third column tells you, well, how to solve it. Well, make sure there's no file with the same name within that directory. So when you need create a new project file and you add new source files or create new source file, two source files with a similar name, it will return you an error. We got this issue when we deleted a file in Vivado, then try to create one with the same name. Make sure that does not happen. The source file needs to be named differently. And this is more specific to basis three board with Arctic 7 chip because that's word I use most of the time in most of my videos. What I'm going to talk about is I have actually uh, pick and chosen four very common errors that you may encounter in your code. The first error could be localhost or target shutdown. So I'm going to say control F and this error is usually 3121 and I'm going to look for it. No hardware target exists on the server localhost 3121. What impact it had, it basically would not detect our basis three board. Your FPJ board was not detected. How do you go about it? How to solve it? We'll navigate to the local driver install script within Vivado tools 
and install the necessary driver that you need. What you have to do is basically follow these steps. Make sure that the USB drivers are installed. Check uh, the fact sheet. Uh, this is what the fact sheet is. Try changing the micro USB cable. A lot of times, if you don't have the right micro USB cable, you might not be able to create an interface between your FPGA board and your computer. Sometimes it also helps unplugging the board and then plugging it back again. Uh, do not use USB ports on the front panel of the desktop. Always try to use the ones at the back. Be sure that GP, JP2 pin is set to USB. Do not connect the board through a USB hub. Uh, try on different PC and see if device manager would recognize your FPGA board. Look for solutions on the Xilinx community forums. Failure to connect to your board may also occur for people who were remoting into a computer in the lab from their PC. So if you are just using a private VPN network and then trying to access to a machine, uh, say, in your school, that might also cause you or prevent you from making a connection between your board. So usually one of these should fix the issue and you just need to follow all these steps one by one and hopefully one of them will resolve the issue. Another one, very common error that people would get a warning is 44513, this right here. Okay, what does it say? Target shut down, closing target. The board connection with Vivado was closed, okay? Make sure that when using the hardware manager, the FPGA board is not disconnected or power off. Whenever you're trying to make an interface between your PC and the FPGA board, you always make sure that your FPGA board is powered on. We got this error because we turned off the FPGA while hardware manager was open and it was connected. Let's see if there were any other errors reported here. So similar error here, unable to upload the bit file, trying to save the memory into the board. Well, finding the right bit file at the right location and then uploading it on the board. A lot of times that uh, error may occur when Whenever you do the implementation and generate a new bit stream file, you make sure you have to choose the right bit file. If you want to do it, you want to be able to upload it. And at the same time, while you're doing it, you have to make sure that your target is on, powered on, and it is able to make a, a interface between your computer and your FPGA board. Another very, very common error is common 1755. Okay, so this error says, set property expect at least one object. What impact it had upon the functionality? Values were not being properly established. Values or variables uh, could, be a, could be a better thing to say over here. So I'll just change it over here. Uh, values slash variables. How to solve it, how to go about it, check to make sure that your in your constant file returns at least one valid object. For this warning, we had a typo in our code. So what's happening here, when you have a constant file, which may look something like this for basis three board. Right now, if say if I'm using a, a switch and I'm, because I have labeled as SW not here, and the not is in square brackets, I need to label my variable name similar to how it appears in your constant file in the top module or, or the source file, right? If the file, if the variable names are a mismatch, then it may throw you an error and may say set property expect at least one object, okay? That basically means any one of your IO port is missing in the constant file. Let's look at one more error over here maybe. So multi, multi-driven net. Again, this is a very, very common error. This is uh, 24, multi-driven net on pin. Okay, the implementation fail, it would not uh, implement the code onto the board. Uh, the reason, there could be a typo in your code. We were assigning the same variable twice. Okay, what happened, these folks, they, their implementation failed, given error saying multi-driven driven net on pin. They were using the same variable name twice. That should not happen again. You should have different names for different IO ports. Okay, let's look at another error. Error that, well, here we don't have a code for, but uh, it was what it was doing. It was giving error only visible when board is prog uh, programmed. Error only visible when board is programmed. 
uh, impact what it impact it had seven segment display in wrong order the segments on the display were not were messed up okay so changing the order of the seven segment constraint file might consider reversing the order of led segments in the constraint what it basically means i'm gonna pull the constraint file again and if i go to the seven segments right here notice here you have seg zero seg one all the way to seg six if it's not displaying in the right manner then you probably what what you might want to do is swap the order okay make this seg six make this seg five reverse the order and hopefully that should fix the issue to another very common errors that occur in Vivado are place design error place design empty or error so in this case the implementation failed and that's because of the constraint file was just completely missing. You cannot run implementation without having a constraint file for your FPGA board. Second error that I was referencing to is the flash programming. When you are trying to save your code onto the ROM. Okay, now remember folks, this is again specifically to basis three board. The basis three board has ROM from two different companies. One from the company called Spension and the other one is from the Micronics. So when you are creating a new project, setting up your target family and package and everything, make sure you're, you have the right ROM selected. So in case if it's from the Spension, you need to select this. But if it's, it is from Micronics, you need to select this package right here for your memory device. So I hope this will be a good help a good resource for you to troubleshoot some of the errors and like I mentioned before if you come across any error which is not in there and you know you have been able to troubleshoot or debug it please forward it to me and I can add it to this master excel sheet so there are hundred errors I can go really one by one but it's gonna be a long video but I, I want you to recognize one thing here folks all of you or anyone can be a programmer but nobody can be a debugger or a troubleshooter. Troubleshooting and debugging is an art and I really want each and every one of you to be an independent learner here. If you come across any error, go to this sheet, try to troubleshoot it yourself. If for some reason you are unable to fix it, leave a comment in the description. If you find an error which is not in there but you know how it is a solution to it, please leave that also in the description. I will keep on updating this sheet okay Vivado does not have a very good community just like Arduino would have it so what I'm trying to do is build a community for Vivado and Verilog I thank you again for your time and I wish you all the good luck I hope you will find this resource helpful I'll leave the link to a Excel sheet like Google Drive link in the description box and you can have an access to it thank you for watching bye